Kings had an eight-year run, folks, of postseason appearances beginning in 1998. They were good. They were really good at one point. Before that, though, the Kings missed playoffs 11 out of 12 years. And the Kings started as the Rochester Royals back in 1951. They played for 73 seasons, moved, first moved to Sacramento back in 1986. Now, let's go to Sarah Hodges, who's in studio with us now. She's been following the playoff push. Whew. Let's talk about a lot of things. Well, let's start with Monty McNair, yeah. who... Uh, Played a key role in getting this team to this point. It starts at the top, and without him, they wouldn't yep. be where they are. You're absolutely right. Starts at the top, so we're going to go ahead and give credit where credit's due, and that's Vivek Ranadive because he made the hire of bringing in Monte McNair, and Monte McNair has made some incredible moves since. I know that we were all upset to see Tyrese Halliburton go, but in that move, in came Demonis Sabonis, and we've seen what he's been able to do for this team. Double doubles, triple doubles on any given night. Loves to share the ball. Doesn't care about it. It being about him, he wants the entire team to win, and that's what we've watched all season long out of him. In his first full season here with the Kings, we watched him play a few months last season, but it's just been, it's all paid off. Because I was a little bit upset to see Tyrese go too, right. I'm not going to lie. And you know, a lot of people were, but you're right, yeah. DeMontis Savonis came in, and look at what he's been doing for the team. Like you said it before, completely selfless, and really, mm. the whole team has been selfless. And talk about what Mike Brown has played in his mm. role in all that. Jeez, you guys, Mike Brown has been so incredible for this team. He loves on his players, and you, you can see it, you can feel it. He wants them to win. He wants them to be good, but not just win on the court. He wants them to win as fathers, as brothers, as friends. And when you have a guy who believes in you, which he does, he believes in each one of his players and he lets them know that he's just a player's coach. Mm -hmm. A lot of players don't love their head coaches. It's, they love him. It's yeah. facts. But they love Mike Brown, and that's because of the type of person he is. He cheers for them. He roots for them in every way possible. And just, he's hard on them, too. Yeah. You know, if they're not playing defense, he's going to pull them out of the game. But you've got truth. to respect that yeah. because that's what it's about. It's about winning games at the end of the day, and it's about holding each and every one and player accountable just like we would do here. You Gotta sneak have one more, love. No doubt. Sneak one more question in about the players themselves. Sure. Uh, because you can tell when you go to a game and just watching them, they, they, they love each other. They love playing oh, yeah. with each other as a team. And that shows, and it goes a long way. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think that we talk about Devonis Sabonis, and we know how great he is, but De'Aaron Fox and just what he's been able to do this season. I know a lot of people were thinking, hey, Let's get rid of Foxy in that trip. Why are we getting rid of Tyrese Halliburton? Now he is the most clutch player down the stretch in the fourth quarter in the entire league. He has really come into his own. And seeing what De'Aaron Fox has been able to do for this team, how much he's grown, and not just on the offense, right? We see what he's able to do down the stretch in the fourth quarter, and it's amazing. But on defense, he's really becoming this two-way player that a lot of people didn't think that he could be because of how much energy he exerts on offense. Yeah. It's a lot. He's fast. But it takes a lot of energy to be that quick and do all that on offense. But what he's able to do on defense, too, I think is what really sets him apart right now where he stands in the league.